So some of the equipment that we'll be using, we have our disassembled medical grade oxygen tank. We have our pressure regulator. What's important with this is we wanna make sure that we verify that our O-ring is intact. We have our non-sparking wrench to open our oxygen tank. We have an extra set of oxygen tubing. We have a non-rebreather mask. We have lubricant for our NPA or nasopharyngeal airway. Our OPA, our oral pharyngeal airway. We have a disassembled bag valve mask, which we'll assemble in the lab. And then we have our non-invasive suction with the ink hour tip. Okay, let's talk about this O2 tank here. So first things first, we have an O2 tank that we need to clear of dust and debris. If you look at the uh, pin index safety system system right here, uh, you should have sometimes dust, dirt, or even metal shavings. So put your key on here, lefty loosey, open it up. It will shoot out all that dust and debris. Go ahead and close it back up. All right, let's put on your pressure regulator. This pressure regulator will only go on one way and one way only. Let's just check and look inside here. You will see an O-ring. Make sure that is present, otherwise you will have leaks. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble the pressure regulator. It goes on only one way, according to the pin index safety system. Once you have this on, now would be the best time to go ahead and open up the tank with a half turn, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You can now also check and make sure you have 2,000 PSI, um, no less than 200 PSI. You can turn the flow meter here up to 15 liters per minute or whatever device uh, is required. Okay, so let's talk about head tilt, chin lift, and jaw thrust. Head tilt, chin lift, hand should go on the forehead, hand should go on the bony parts of the chin, not the soft tissue underneath as that can push on the base of the tongue and actually choke the patient. So simply uh, here and here are the hand placements and aggressively tilt the head. Okay, the goal is to get the base of the tongue away from the hyoid bone, the posterior portions of the throat. Now with the jaw thrust, the technique is uh, a little different, but the the purpose is very much the same. We're trying to pull the base of the tongue away from the posterior of the throat. So we're gonna put more than likely the thumbs on either the zygomatics or the person's forehead. Your two um, fingers here should be going on the lower angle of the jaw. Push down on the zygomatics, pull up on the lower angle of the jaw. And what we're trying to look for is the lower jaw to protrude anteriorly. We're not trying to open the mouth. The mouth is not um, what we're trying to open up here, it is the posterior of the throat. So once again, uh, thumbs on the zygomatics, fingers on the lower angles, we're pushing with the thumbs, pulling up, and we're trying to protrude the lower jaw. Okay, so let's talk about the um, basic adjuncts here, the airway adjuncts. We have an OPA, an NPA, we have some lube. Let's talk about the OPA, the oral pharyngeal airway. So first things first, we have to measure it. We have to put this from the earlobe to the corner of the mouth. Once we determine that's correct, the sequence of steps are to manually open the airway. So let's head tilt, chin lift. Then we have the cross finger technique to open the mouth, meaning I'm gonna put my middle finger on the top of the teeth, my thumb on the bottom of the teeth. And you can go towards the corner here so that you can keep the middle of the mouth open. We'll take the uh, OPA that we've already measured, we'll push uh, the hook towards the roof of the mouth until the angle here of the curvature is past the lips. Turn 180 degrees, and you should note that the flange should either sit on the lips or underneath the lips, that, that's fine. And that is your OPA technique. Okay, so let's talk about the NPA, the nasal pharyngeal airway. So. Um, Again, we have to measure this device. We're gonna measure it from the earlobe to the nasal passage right there. And once measured, let's go ahead and lube it up. Get some lube, spray it on as appropriate, water-based lube. Um, we're going to piggy the nose to do an assessment of which nasal passage I want to go. So let's try the nasal passage on the right side first with the bevel facing. And we're gonna push uh, straight down 90 degrees towards um, 
through towards the nasal passage here. And if I'm feeling resistance, okay, even after trying to twist it down, go ahead, pull it out. Let's look at the other nasal passage, um, bevel to the septum again, and let's go ahead, twist it in 90 degrees down. Once that goes in, we'll tape it down and we're done. Okay, so with the suction device here, what we need to do is make sure there are no leaks. So there's a couple of points here that if any points like here, the opening, these two connections here, this connection here, or the actual canister itself, if any of these parts are open, you will not have correct suction. So assess that first. When we turn on the suction device, you will see the numbers here um, start out around 50 to maybe 100 millimeters of mercury. That's the amount of suction you have. To get more suction out of the device, we have to kink the hose. Kinking the hose involves making sure that we stop vacuuming from taking place, and you will see the numbers rise up to that 300 millimeters of mercury that's required. So this is where we head tilt chin lift. We cross finger technique. I still have the kink in place. I will place the rigid tip as far as I can see back, which is about the uvula. Once I see the uvula, then and only then do I release the kink to apply the suction. Once I apply the suction for about no more than 10 seconds, I will remove this and I will reattempt if necessary by re-kinking, rebuilding that pressure. Understand that this pressure that you use is finite. So if you release the pressure before you apply this, the 300 millimeters of mercury is now used up and you will not have sufficient suction. Your scenario is you live in the barracks, your shipmates knock on your door, they can't wake up their roommate who is asleep in his bed. Understood. BSI for my buddy and I, my scene safe. Your scene is safe. Okay, so mechanism of injury is um, they can't wake up my buddy. Number of patients is one. I'll have additional help on standby, uh, H1 hunt, and I'll take C-spine precautions just in case. All right, so um, what do I see here and smell? You see your patient lying in bed, there are beer bottles everywhere, and you smell vomit. Okay, so, sir, sir, hey, I'm Mr. Andy. Can I help you? No response. Okay, so for testing purposes, I will ask all the output questions. Uh, sir, where, what is your name, where are you, and what time is it? No response. Sir, if you can hear the sound of my voice, squeeze my fingers or blink your eyes. No response. Okay, rub the sternum, trapezius pinch, nail bed pinch. No response. This guy is unconscious. I need to see if he's alive. Check the carotid pulse. Your patient has a pulse. He does have a pulse. Let's go ahead and go to airways. So uh, I'm going to head tilt chin lift, or I can jaw thrust. You see vomit in the airway. Vomit in the airway. Okay, let's get my suction. I need to kink the hose. Turn it on. Build the 300, excuse me, 300 PSI. I'm gonna head tilt. Cross finger, still holding the kink, inside to the uvula, let go of the kink. Airway is clear. Okay, airway is clear. We need to protect the airway. Let's start with the OPA. I'm going to measure and I'm going to put it in as appropriate. And your patient starts gagging. My patient starts gagging. I need to pull it out down to his chin. Let's go ahead and try to. The NPA, measure from ear lobe to nose. Okay, let's loop it up. And assess the nostrils by piggy nose and the nostril. I'm gonna try the right nostril. And I'm re meeting resistance, so I'm gonna try the other nostril. Twisting motion, it goes in much better. Okay, let's go ahead and tape that down. Does my patient tolerate? Patient tolerate. He does, let's go over to breathing. Okay, let's expose the chest. Do I see any additional injuries? You do not. Let's tiger claw the thoracic cavity. Anything noted? No injuries. All right, what's the rate and quality of this breathing? 24 with adequate depth. Okay, it sounds like he's going into respiratory distress. Let's go ahead and give him some O2 via the non-rebreathing. Let's put the O2 point together. Let's 
open up this tank here. Crack it open, lefty loosey, righty tighty, dust debris cleared. Now let's go ahead and put on the regulator. Okay, let's turn this to 15. This is still closed. We have 2000 PSI. Let's put on my NRB. Let's now crack this open again, lefty loosey. 2000 PSI. Pre-fill my bag. Bag is full. Okay. Let's go ahead and install the bag as appropriate. Well, I'm going to have to pull this off here. Okay. Does the patient tolerate? You notice your patient's cyanotic. Okay. So he now looks like he's going to respiratory failure. Let's go ahead and take that off. Take that off. Let's grab my BBM. Alright. Let's get to the head of the bed here. Head tilt and lift, EC clamp, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Your partner rise and take over. Okay, go ahead and take over ventilations while I attach the O2 hose. Okay, making sure that the O2 hose goes on as appropriate and goes towards the, the rear of the bag and my partner continues to bag or continue my assessment let's go to circulation uh, let's do a quick blood sweep so big pipes towards the core towards the legs any bleeding noted no bleeding noted okay let's go up to the arms any bleeding noted no okay let's check the radial pulses we're weak and rapid weak and rapid skin color temperature condition pale cool diaphoretic okay this guy needs to be treated for shock and he is a high priority of transport. Okay, so let's do a secondary assessment based upon the MOI, which would be a head to toe assessment in this case. We'll do a sample history, um, take a set of vital signs. Um, my field impression for this gentleman is that uh, more than likely he was drinking, went unconscious, he vomited, had airway obstruction, uh, and is going into respiratory failure. Uh, I'm going to treat any non-life-threatening injuries as the doctor prescribes. And let's do a reassessment. So this guy is unstable. I am going to reassess my VIPS, as in I'm gonna redo a set of vitals, of my second vitals, recheck my interventions, which is my BBM, my NPA, okay, and treatment for shock. Um, I will redo certain parts of the primary, secondary assessment, and I will provide an accurate misreport. Misreport stands for the mechanism of injury, the injury itself, the signs and symptoms, and the treatments given, I'm done.